All right, good morning, everyone. We're waiting for our last couple of people to join the webcast, and we'll get started in about one minute. All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the recap of DrupalCon New Orleans. I am Rachel Friesen, the events manager at the Drupal Association. And so uh, I, this morning or this evening, depending where you are, I will be walking you through uh, what, what occurred in May back in, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, so we ended up with a really strong uh, overall attendance at the event. We essentially maintained our, our headcount overall at the conference from Los Angeles. Um, we did notice that we had a little bit of a drop off in our one day tickets, which is not entirely surprising as Los Angeles is a much bigger market to pull um, one day attendees from. Um, one other thing that we saw compared to Los Angeles was um, that the Higher Ed Summit is still extremely popular and that um, the Business Summit dropped off a little bit, uh, but that also doesn't surprise us considering uh, the location was not as large of a city. Overall, our attendees uh, for the con were fairly similar to what we saw in Los Angeles and previously in Austin and Portland. Um, we have shifted this question so that people can select um, only, excuse me, they can select uh, only one item. Um, and in the past, they were able to select more multiples. Um, so the, clearly, the number one thing that we've got going on at DrupalCon is full stack developers, which is great, and front end uh, developers and themers. Um, one other thing that kind of maintained year over year is our Drupal experience. Um, so pretty consistent breakdown um, compared to Los Angeles um, and a, a stronger weight to the advanced and intermediate um, uh, attendee. Uh, we had attendees representing a lot of different industries and this is a question where people can select multiple industries. We know that a lot of you specialize in, in multiple things. Um, education uh, is definitely the, the winner in that front, uh, as well as nonprofit and government and general services. So um, we have a great variety of re industries represented, and it's really cool to see how strong um, education and government um, and media uh, are at DrupalCon. Um, so jumping into the financials, uh, this is a summary of how we did overall. Our total revenue includes ticket uh, sales as well as sponsorship dollars. And our expenses include uh, everything that we put out to put on the con. And the one thing that I will say is different is that we are not including Drupal Association uh, staff wages and benefits in this breakdown, whereas in years previous we have. So if you're comparing it year over year, which I will in the next slide, uh, you'll notice that that it looks like there's a, a jump on expenses, or excuse me, actually a drop on expenses. Um, and in reality, it, it's dropped about or it went up about $20,000 um, over last year. But the reason why that looks more notable than that is that, um, that we didn't include that line item. Um, so overall, our net income uh, came in a little over a million dollars, which is wonderful. Um, we had projected that at uh, $900,000. So we we're really happy with how we were able to um, shore up some last minute attendees and sponsors, as well as um, reduce uh, our expenses in the lead up to the event. So here's where you can see comparing uh, New Orleans to Los Angeles. And again, this is where you can see uh, the difference of about $170,000 that is not included in, in the New Orleans model. Um, here's our breakdown on conference revenue. So um, our, number one, uh, our number one income generator is obviously our conference tickets, followed by training tickets. And then um, we broke out each individual summit. We had two new summits this year. Who, uh, we offered at an introductory rate, and we were really happy with uh, our attendance numbers on the Medium Publishing Summit and the Government Summit. And uh, at the very bottom, you'll see our sponsorship revenue lot that uh, we were really excited that we hit our goal on that. Um, here's our expenses. Um, nothing really notable from last year other than, um, again, we're not including wages and benefits. 
Um, our catering is obviously our biggest expense. Feeding uh, 3,000 people for five days is, is pretty spendy. Um, other than that, everything came in exactly where we were forecasting it to, which is great. Um, a few things that we learned financially related to the con. Uh, we see t our training demand is easing slightly. Um, I'm curious to see how that'll play out for the next year to two years. As G8 is a little bit more mature and has more time to percolate, that could easily bounce back due to that demand. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes uh, in Baltimore. Um, our summits are even more in demand. We're finding that that's a really great place where um, people can connect with their peers and talk about things that are common in their industry. And so um, we will continue to look at the, that summit format and see if there's anything that we want to tweak or add or, or alter for future cons. Um, another thing that's interesting is in the North America con, our hotel room pickups are increasing. So whereas our overall attendance is um, roughly staying the same, we're seeing more people staying on the hotel, um, the, the group hotels, which is wonderful. Um, this is not a widely known thing, but staying in the group hotels does benefit the cons and allows us to keep um, those expenses low. Often we have incentives that are tied to how many um, attendees stay at the contracted hotels. And so that's just a small way that, you know, if you have a choice between a hotel that's on block or an off block, um, if you pick on block, it does um, help keep the ticket prices low. Um, and additionally, is regarding expenses, the events team was really able to manage expenses well. Um, we had a few different projections on where we thought our attendance may come in for this event. And as we got closer to the event, we were able to really make sure that things kind of um, normalized out and we uh, projected our expenses high and our revenue low. And luckily we overachieved on both of those things. Um, we also were able to shift some catering orders to help uh, ensure we were able to hit our uh, net revenue or net income goal. And we uh, really optimized internally how we structure our hotel blocks for Drupal Association staff and vendors to really um, pick up all the perks that come with that. So uh, again, tying back to the um, group, people staying in the group hotels, we we're able to, um, you know, utilize uh, complimentary rooms based on how many people stay there. So we use that to reduce the expenses of the con and pass that savings on um, to the attendee. So for marketing, we have quite a few channels and platforms that we utilize in, in communicating about the con. Um, for the most part, a lot of this is standard that we've done in the past. One of the new things that is new to DrupalCon North America as our photography team. Um, it was completely volunteer driven and Michael Cannon led a group of great volunteers who took spectacular photos of the event. Um, we also uh, incorporated a, 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 a DrupalCon banner on Drupal.org and a block kind of promoting the event. So that was a new addition this year. And uh, we have a blog that we issue kind of news updates and um, programming notes as well as um, get feedback from uh, attendees. So these are our top five uh, blog posts for DrupalCon New Orleans. And email continues to be our most successful way to communicate with attendees and potential attendees. So uh, we sent fewer emails this year. Um, but it was, uh, they were still effective and we had a great uh, open rate and click through rate, which is well above industry standards. We found quite a few, uh, we tried a few different things with uh, various ways of referring um, traffic into um, our, uh, into the DrupalCon website and tried to, you know, obviously convert that over to registrations and attendees. Um, we had, uh, uh, paid campaign on Twitter, which generated 40% of our referral traffic, which is great. Um, the biggest percentage of clicks was on our money saving offer. Uh, we also utilized, as I mentioned earlier, a Drupal.org banner, which um, had about 5,000 sessions. Uh, we did face a little bit of pushback from some active community members, and it can be suffer from being used too often, so we will be really strategic in how we use that uh, going forward. And a super special thank you to Paul and Alex, who are our social media super volunteers and do just a tremendous amount of work, not only in the lead up to the event, but on site and throughout the actual event. So thank you, Paul and Alex. Uh, we had a few lessons learned related to marketing. Um, emails asking a large recipient group to spend money towards lower, trended towards lower open and click-through rates. Um, so one of the things we're working on doing in the moving forward is having more targeted and segmented lists and providing a little bit more of unique content. 
Uh, we had 42,000 unique page views of uh, EDO, of the New Orleans website, and 3,000 attendees. So that means that fewer than one in 10 visits is leading to a registration. Um, so we're looking at how we're uh, approaching this, not, uh, well, not necessarily trying to increase awareness, but create, increase that conversion rate. We do have a smaller marketing team this year. Our marketing team has uh, been reduced over the past uh, probably like 18 months, I'd say. And so we are needing to find ways to amplify our reach with a little bit less effort. So finding ways to kind of streamline and um, uh, mechanize various things that we do and, and tap the community in for more support. Um, we are working on becoming even more strategic on when we um, publish content. We have a lot of people um, in and out of our website prepping blog posts and getting things ready to go. And so one thing that we're going to work on um, improving in the future is how we schedule those out for different time zones and um, tailoring content for the different platforms. We had quite a few summits this year at DrupalCon. We had our business summit, higher ed summit, and community summit. There's a bunch of feedback here, so I won't go through and read every word on the slide to you, because that's not a fun presentation. Um, but we found that, that the summits are really becoming popular with um, end users of, of Drupal. So uh, people in government agencies or people that work at uh, Drupal shops that specialize in government uh, work, it's, it's really interesting to see these summits start to take form um, and, and how they grow over time. Uh, a great example of that is our Higher Education Summit, which we launched last year and sold out nearly immediately this year. <laughs> and uh, we are seeing that there's a hungry demand for that and trying to see how we can continue to improve that experience for people and also find ways that we can um, handle the increase in demand and make sure that we get as many people there that, that want to be there. A session. So we had quite a few sessions. I think we had 149 sessions. Um, our highest attended session was on configuration management. And our highest ranked session was a project management um, about I'm a scrumberjack and I'm okay. And I would have sung that if I was a better singer, but I'm not. <laughs> Congratulations to Amy. Uh, so overall, our feedback on the sessions and, and the content and programming. Um, attendees valued honesty and enthusiasm in presenters, so people can really pick up on those, um, the enthusiasm that people have for the topic they're speaking on. Um, people appreciated when it was obvious that uh, speakers had practiced their session, and uh, they really liked having demos. So not necessarily a live demo, but something that showed uh, what they were speaking about and not just talking about something they were speaking about. Something that we can work on for next year is making sure that the presentations are more accessible so that the type size, coloring, and spacing uh, really makes it so that they're easily read. And uh, ensuring our speakers speak clearly, not only with the speed and volume, but making sure that everybody can uh, understand what they're saying, whether they're in the front or the back of the room. And uh, making sure that the track descriptions are um, representative of the, excuse me, that the sessions are representative of the track description, so making sure that people are, are coming and hearing what they're expecting to hear. Uh, one of the great things from New Orleans is we had an increase in people um, evaluating the sessions, which is wonderful. Uh, we can't thank you enough if you attended New Orleans and, and filled out a session evaluation. The speakers really do rely on that to help make sure that future talks at DrupalCon or other conferences or meetups um, you know, they incorporate that feedback and really want to make sure that they're always improving what they're what they're speaking on. Um, so increasing that ways that we're going to continue to increase the rankings, we want to ensure that the track, descri track descriptions say what the sessions are about, uh, what the, the attendee will have learned, and what the speakers why the speakers qualified to speak on that topic. Uh, we're going to encourage speakers to review their descriptions and make sure that it comes out uh, before the um, comes out before the cons so that attendees can plan their days accurately and providing some speakers with additional tips on making their sessions stand out. Um, one other thing that we really heard in our, um, our con survey was that people would be really interested in having like a two hour hands-on session, so somewhat of a labs track. So that's one thing that we're looking at. And um, we've also heard feedback that it'd be great to have additional resources for first time speakers. Sprints, we had 517 people attend sprints on Friday which is wonderful. We had 60% of them uh, say that they found the sprints to be useful or very useful, which is really great. 
Uh, we have a picture there of all of our sprint mentors. It's I'm always astounded at how many people come and just want to share uh, how to contribute with others. And I, I really thank the sprint mentors for coming and bringing their enthusiasm to not only the day, but also to bringing that enthusiasm <laughs> to teaching new people about contributing to Drupal. And one of the exciting things from the survey was that often um, speaker sprinters were Sprinters were many people's favorite parts of the DrupalCon experience. So that was really cool to see that those sprints really stood out to people. Um, overall, the top reasons why people come to DrupalCon, it's the session content and networking, uh, which is not entirely surprising if you've been to DrupalCon. Uh, the sessions, networking, social events, um, we saw a little bit of a drop off on BOFs, uh, but overall people are, are really coming to DrupalCon for the programming. 93% um, of attendees found the sessions were somewhat or very useful, which is great. 62% um, of them found it very useful, which is, it, it, which is really wonderful. Um, as far as networking goes, 87% of attendees thought that the networking opportunities were somewhat or very useful. Um, and we saw, and you can see down below, it's kind of an even breakout as far as how that goes between social events box and the exhibit hall. It's really exciting to see that 75% um, of people thought that the exhibit hall were was somewhat or very useful. Um, so a comparison from last year over the very uh, useful activities at the con, um, the notable improvements over last year were sessions, um, general networking, and the exhibit hall. And where we saw two uh, declines were uh, contribution sprints and BOFs. Overall, our net promoter score is 53, which is excellent. And some of the feedback that we got from the attendee survey uh, was that many people were excited uh, or came to hear sessions and learn new skills. And we were exceeding their, meeting or exceeding their expectations that they can um, better round that program experience out by providing more meaningful interactions around BOFs and keynotes. Um, so we saw definitely that people, uh, the BOFs had a little bit of a drop off for New Orleans. So we're gonna take a look at that for Baltimore in ways that we can make that a little bit more accessible. Uh, people, we see that people came to network and they like who they meet when they're there, um, the conversations that it stirs up, but there are also um, additional ways that we can improve the space that, that people can find each other at. So you may, whether that's a designated time or location, something that creates a more um, intentional interaction around networking. Our sponsorship summary, we are really excited we met our goal. Um, the sponsors are happy to give back and are wanting to see even more uh, business development opportunities. Um, sponsors love to uh, see deeper levels of engagement with the attendees. So that's one of our number one questions we get when people are looking to sponsor DrupalCon is how can they um, engage with the community? How can they get involved? How can they um, uh, connect with people? Uh, sponsors also really appreciated the efforts towards making them comfortable and feel appreciated, which is great. Uh, thanks to Tim on our team who works with them uh, hand in hand in the lead up to the events to make sure that they have everything they need and, and have no surprises on site. Overall with DrupalCon, we feel like we are providing and we're hearing that we're providing what the attendees want. So they're getting solid sessions and opportunities to network and interact with others. Um, we're gonna continue to build on those wins by rounding on our content, providing uh, more spaces for targeted interactions and networking and work to improve any areas where we weren't necessarily exceeding expectations. Uh, we were glad that we were able to uh, maintain attendee counts with a have marketing team, that's no small feat, and that's an area where we could possibly pump it up in the future. Uh, we understand that the city impacts the con for the decision to come and after con activities as well as social events, so we're continuing to target cities that provide uh, opportunities for attendees to get out and explore and programming that is welcoming and is cost responsible. Uh, so going forward, we're going to focus on a few areas. Uh, programming enhancements is one, so continuing to add content for the non-developer audience, so particularly Drupal customers. Um, as a, continu a conference continues to widen the audience with summits, tracks, and additional activities, we want to make sure that everybody that comes to DrupalCon can find their uh, tribe. Uh, we want to continue to engage with attendees in meaningful ways, so uh, we're looking at finessing our programming to best suit attendees, so targeted content at summits, additional programming in the exhibit hall, um, hands-on learning opportunities during the week, so for instance, those two-hour labs. Uh, we're, we're really looking uh, for ways to continue to develop uh, the way that people experience the, the learnings that they can find at DrupalCon. 
Uh, we have done some work this past year, but we want to continue to create more value for sponsors and simplify the process. Uh, so facilitating, uh, we want to facilitate those connections between our business community and the uh, Drupal community. Um, they're an integral part of our of maintaining our Drupal, Drupal ecosystem. And so we want to make sure that we can help companies kind of find the right customers and focus on um, low effort sponsorships, so ones that are easy for them to come in and, and find those people um, and provide a high benefit to them. I think as, a, as Megan has a blog post on, on the association website, you know, we're working with a smaller team this year, so we have a little bit of a reduced capacity. Um, and so we going beyond, uh, or beyond New Orleans into Baltimore and beyond that, uh, we need to be able to do more with less. So we are ensuring that we're prioritizing the right improvements for the con attendees. So we're, we're keeping the focus on um, the experience uh, for our attendees at the event and finding ways that we can uh, continue to execute with a reduced headcount. So finding things that we can do internally to kind of streamline our own systems and processes. And I don't know if anyone has any questions. Let me uh, exit out of the presentation. There is a Q&A or a chat function, excuse me. If anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them in there. I'll wait a little bit to see if anything comes up. Okay. And that is the end of the summary. On to Baltimore. Um, again, my name is Rachel Friesen, and if anyone has any questions after uh, possibly watching this on YouTube, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, my contact information is on the staff page of the association website. And thank you for your interest in DrupalCon.